Why go into politics? Specifically, why become an independent? Because, as you know, independents don't normally win the votes. <laughs> well, um, as an individual, uh, you would be seen as a corporate guy and doing uh, CSR or doing some charity and so on. But if you want to bring structural changes uh, to the bigger group and so on, then you need to be uh, in the parliament. Or at least, uh, uh, well, a lot of people made to parliament in first attempt because of the party and the logo they stand for. But it's not being in the parliament itself is important, but uh, ability to uh, to come out of the fear. I'll talk about the fear of losing later, mm -hmm. fear of losing friends, fear of losing, uh, you know. So, being in politics, I'll be able to um, uh, to say what I want to say and uh, will be heard compared to just uh, an individual person. And secondly, I'll be able to motivate more people, more young people, uh, who especially below 40, uh, to come into politics, to take an active citizenship role. Because a lot of us, we think that politics is dirty. And isn't, isn't it? Well, uh, the way that I, I'm playing it, I'm looking at, um, uh, I choose this. And in fact, um, before uh, I came, I had a, ch had a chat with my wife, and she said that uh, I choose this. Uh, win or lose is not important. Do it pleasantly, do it professionally. And uh, it's not about achievement. Uh, it's about the, the journey of experience. So the way that I am looking at it, I don't see it uh, dirty. But if likewise, if people look at achievement and because they want to achieve, they end up buying wood, they end up uh, uh, breaking all the, uh, what do you call it, the, the election commission uh, rules and so on, then it's a bit dirty. What kind of change specifically do you want to do if yeah. you do get elected? Well, first of all, I believe that our government should consist of laws rather than men. The law and the rule of law is more important than the person, the people. And secondly, economic and social justice uh, can be best served by free men through free enterprise. Okay. It's not by uh, certain groups of people or political parties uh, are controlling the big uh, listed uh, companies and so on. Or we could look into, uh, uh, well, uh, I'll give you some good examples, whether it is the, the, the toll collection operators or even IPPs and so on. So it's controlled through GLCs and GLCs and eventually controlled. Okay, so specifically cartel. you're fighting for free market, is it? Yeah, economic and social justice. Yeah. And the most important is no man should be punished for his origin, ethnicity, culture, or religion. So I believe that none of these should be used as a, as a boundary or, or for selection. So in, in the yeah. context of Malaysia today, mm. that would mean abolishing NEP and affirmative action? No, I wouldn't say abolishing NEP. I think is about ensuring the NEP benefiting the right uh, Boeing Putra. So when you go through an IPO process, you have certain uh, percentage of shares should be given to Boeing Putra. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. We're not uh, disputing that. We agree that that's a check and balance and so on. But what type of Boeing Putra? Because if you look at it, MITI have a list, a list of qualified Boeing Putra. So for example, let's say, Melissa, I have known you and so on. You come from Tanju Malayam and so on. Just happened to that, that I believe that you are a good person, that, that I think they can add value to my company. I come and talk to you, Melissa. Melissa, uh, this uh, allocation of Bumi shares, we'd like to give it to you. But the authority will say you are a non-qualified Bumi Putra because you have no track record and you have no proof of fund to buy this. So by doing this, only the rich Bumi Putra will get richer. And the poorer one will not be able to go into these uh, boomy allocated shares and so on. So you have to go to the market to buy. So you could see there's a huge imbalances of system. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about any piece of objective to ensure there's a, there's a balanced uh, economic social structure between the various races and so on, uh, it will be never achieved if the hands of God balancing this. Okay, so that's a lot for one man to take, yeah. um, to undertake. So why did you choose to run as an independent? Just going back to that yeah. very quickly, why choose as independent instead of aligning yourself to one party or the other? Or are you aligned to one party or another? <laughs> well, um, you were previously with MIC. Yeah, I was with MIC Jews and also with the main body and so on. I think, but more than that, um, uh, I don't want to talk about MIC and so on uh, because they try to make changes and so on, but they have own different culture and so on. So MIC uh, is a is a is a cartel. So it's a group of uh, highly hundred influential people managing it. So I would I would not like to touch that. But uh, why independent? Because you need a third voice in the parliament. 
So when you are associated with a party or you're within a party or you're a strong party man, so sometimes that you have the close friend in certain issues and so on, but that issues are involving minority. Let me give you an example. If let's say you are in a party and your party is in a ruling government, and there are about 100 people going to be affected because, uh, let's say, they are, they are staying in a temporary occupied land. The land is going to be developed by a very influential developer, and the developer has been funding the party. Here, the party will not fight for the 100 people. So you need independence to raise up the issue. Yes, the development is good, but how can we solve these 100 people who are living there to ensure that they have a place to stay? Okay. So you need a check and balance. All right, I'm just going to go back before we wrap up, just going back to uh, Master Scale, where you, you step down from all executive positions in Master Scale, which is a public listed company. Uh, when you did that, you left your shareholders. So how would voters know this time around that you're not going to do the same to them? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that I've left the shareholders because if I want to well, leave... Well, you left the company. Yeah, if you talk about uh, uh, loyalty, despite our first brain aneurysm, you know, uh, with all the clips and so on, which I do not know whether I'll make it, I came back to work within 15 days. In my second aneurysm, I came back to work after one week. So you could see that nobody would ever do this that much. I love the company more than myself and so on. But likewise, I had my objectives, which I said uh, that uh, what is my retirement uh, figure in my EPF. So I think I've achieved that objective at the same time that I promised uh, what do you call it, to, to my family members that uh, eventually that uh, I will go, move out of corporate. It's not about money. Uh, it's not about uh, having 100 million extra in the bank and so on. Uh, but it's more on principles and belief. And, uh, and I have informed my key shareholders uh, a two years notice. I've told them very clearly that uh, my contract will be expiring and so on. And, it's, uh, and I want to do it earlier. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much for speaking with us. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Thank <laughs> you.